plus years. At some point, you realize you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. Start there, huh? Yeah. That goes for it. Welcome to episode 92 of Married into Crazy with Snooks and Lovey. I'm Lovey. Oh, I'm Snooks. <laughs> See the amount of abuse I take in this relationship? I said 92. I know, but you was talking over me. That's abuse. Okay. In some way, shape, or form. Anyway. I think so. Anyway, we want to welcome everybody back. We love. The conversations that we've been having with a lot of our friends and family over the course of the last uh, two weeks. There's a lot happening in the U.S. Um, I'm, I'm especially proud of my daughters, um, my daughter, one of which is actually standing up for her rights and she's out and talking to people and having uncomfortable conversations. Uncomfortable conversations with us. Well, we've had some great ones here in the house as well. Yeah, she's really... Um... You know, she's it's exciting to see her be an activist. She has her own views about certain things. And, you know, she calls mom and dad out on things that she thinks how we should do something better or different. And, you know, I, I, I applaud that. But sometimes I'm like, okay, pump the brakes, girl. <laughs> Watch that tone. She up here talking about, I'm Angela Davis. She doesn't even know Angela Davis is. Well be. But, you know, it's funny. to your point, she's had me kind of relook at and reevaluate mm-hmm. the way I've approached certain things. Yeah, absolutely. And she's, yeah, she's, she's gotten me active in a few ways. It was nice. We actually went out and protested um, and did some demonstrations together as a family. She and I went one day and then you joined us the next day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that was really good. And it's great. We've had some, like I said, some phenomenal conversations where we've, at, we've pushed her and how she thinks critically, and she's actually pushed us in things that we need to consider yeah. um, going forward. So it's been really fun in that respect, but I think that says a lot about relationships. Um, I think we need to have uncomfortable conversations even within our relationships. Yeah. <coughs> so sorry. Anyway, it's very hot in here. I just worked out. This is my second day in a row. So for all of you that are watching, I'm kind of shiny, but I was telling Nubby, you can see me, I'm like, I like his light. I'm just going to stare at myself and take up the whole camera. (laughs) No, I'm just saying. His light is better than mine. It's the same light. light, My light. It's the same light. I'm dull over here. I'm popping over here. It is the exact same light. Anyway, so I'm just a little bit sweaty, but I'm I'm happy that... That's a low-key racist joke. You're talking about because I'm (laughs) light-skinned. I'm just saying. Wow. You're going, yeah, you yeah, you're there. going there on me. All anyway, right. anyway. No, but when I, want, I want to get back to the, the uncomfortable conversations. There's mm-hmm. some people that have been surprised when they find out that we have a podcast and they listen like, oh my gosh, there's so many things that you guys talk about. And, it, and it's fun when they go through a discovery phase, but then every now and then we'll get these questions about, you know, well, what's the most common thing people ask you when they email you? Um, there's a lot of topics. But one of the things that I asked Snooks about, I was like, what should we talk about? What's something that keeps coming up? And she said, there's there's a lot of myths. There's a lot of things surrounding relationships that aren't necessarily true. Well, it, it wasn't... Okay, so it, it didn't come about as in, like, myths per se. There was a group of girls. We were ladies, I should say. We were at work, and, you know, everyone... Um, there's some that are married. There's a couple divorced, and... I think maybe one is on her second marriage. One's been married five times, married and divorced five times. There's myself and we all were just kind of talking about marriage and how men are and just the different things about, you know, divorce and Yeah, tell me how are kids men? and <laughs> anyway, don't worry about that. <laughs> just, you know, so that that, that kind of, it kind of came up and of course everyone has their different reasons why marriage is in and how you stay married long and um, what goes on, what transpires, the roles in, in marriages and how they're different now because one of the ladies that I work with, 
her husband actually stays home and he keep, he takes care of the kids. And they're trying to it's have like a blackish episode. They're trying to have Dre works. What are you talking? No, but about? he had the guy at the school that oh 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 I was the like, brother what are you that was making about? him feel <laughs> some kind of way because he got to because go be with his kids at school. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and so this they're trying to have another baby, but she's like always at work. She's always at work, and so. The one who's been divorced five times, she's like, well, you do know how this happens, right? You know, they actually have two kids. but So we were, we were just kind of talking about um, the different reasons why, not the different reasons, let's just say the number one reason why marriages don't last. The oh. reasons why, the, the number one reason why. You guys came up with the number one. No, what they thought was. Oh, I can tell you why it doesn't last. Oh, that's funny. And, you know, kind of like that. And so one was like, because the man, well, actually, Cause the, man the common what? consensus was because the man messed up. Oh, because the man cheats? Uh, well, cheats was in there. You messed up, you know, hmm. some way, shape, or form. Of course, it's all ladies now. So, you know, <laughs> they're going to blame the man. So, that was, that is kind of how that came about. So, I was telling Lovey about it. I said, you know, it's so funny how everyone has their different perspective or their different take on what's the reason and why this and the different okay so yeah we'll call them myths about marriage and why they last or how they don't last and so i started looking up stuff because i'm the look up queen i like looking up things and so i typed in five myths of marriage okay hold on before you go on there okay we're going to dive back into this but i was like dive back into what Okay. This is conversation. Oh, okay. But okay. before we go any further, I just hey, want to remind why you. Why you tell me to start and then you tell me to stop? It's like a cliffhanger. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. No, what I wanted to do was remind everybody. I meant to do it at the very beginning. And that is to ask everyone to, not right now, wait till after the podcast. <laughs> Get but, off right now. <laughs> go to Apple Podcast, leave us a review. If you've enjoyed the previous 91 podcast and you've gotten something out of it and you thought it was fun, we were entertaining, educational, what have you. Um, heartfelt, you enjoy the interviews, any of those things, um, go to Apple Podcast, give us a review, and more importantly, give us five. Subscribe and tell your friends. And I'm trying really hard not to sneeze into the microphone because my nose is driving me nuts right now. But please, please, please go to Apple Podcast, leave us a review, and again, more importantly, go tell your friends and get them to subscribe as well. Yes. Now back to our previously scheduled programming. Okay, I'll pick up right where I left off at. And then, no. <laughs> so I was looking up, I, I did type in five myths of marriage. And it's so funny how everyone, you know, different source resources or different sources, they have their own five. So I pulled up three different sources and five the, the five myths of marriage, you know, and every source was different. I don't think that one, maybe two of them, um, had the same thing somewhere, but each of them were all very different. And so and I just kind of got a kick out of what I found. The different ones. I'm well, like, yeah, it's like she's got like papers and lists <laughs> and my printouts. On. This is crazy. So I was like, I was like, what? I ain't never heard of that before. But anyway, so I'm going to talk about the first one. And, these, and were so any of these consistent with what you and the ladies were talking about? Oh uh, yeah, there's a there's a couple. And, and okay, so let me just be clear too. When we were talking, we didn't necessarily talk about like why the marriage ends. We just talked about marriage in general. Some were like, "Well, marriage don't last." So I just, you know, I live with my boyfriend. Me and my honey been together for twenty years, and we've been living together because we don't need a, a a piece of paper that says blah blah blah. And, you know, then of course, you know about the man. He's a cheater. <laughs> well, see. I'm, I'm not saying I, I want I want you to put their business out in the street, but I want you to put their business out in the street. I just want to hear. I, I'm curious. Like, so, what were some of the things that they said that okay, well, you, you had said before that this is the man's fault? Oh, okay. Or... So how it actually how <laughs> how it actually started was one of the ladies we were just kind of talking about the weekend and what we did over the weekend, and she was like, oh, I just cleaned up this weekend because I had stuff to do and the her husband he had taken some stuff out of somewhere didn't put it up and she got tired of walking around it so you know we all could kind of relate to that and we just laughed about it and so the five timer I'll just call her that 
five timer said wow. that's okay. why I'm not married now because my last husband he blah 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 whatever and he would do that and and that's just annoying and then why is it always he makes a big old mess and now I have to pick it up and so everyone kind of chimes in and you know people give their own take about it and and I, I laughed. I said, to be honest, I said, that's probably the flip at our house. I said, Lovey gets so upset with me because I'll take something out. And they're like, you take something out. I, you know, I give them the, I, I said, well, not some, some necessarily take something out and leave it. I said, I'm a cabinet opener. I will open every cabinet and every drawer. <laughs> if it was up to Snooks, she would open up all of our cabinets and go next door to a neighbor's house. She go over to Brits and she will open up Brits cabinets just to open them and leave them open, just to go piss our neighbors so off. Funny. I don't know. She will not close doors. Yes, I, I always close. No, doors. The, I mean drawers. Oh, I you want to like, close drawers? You, you know I'm scared. She'll open up a drawer. Look, you know what really drives me nuts is when you actually have the cabinets open, a drawer pulled out, and the dishwasher is all the way down. <laughs> the uh -uh. doors open. To, let me uh, let me mm. let me let, let's clarify. The only 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 time I do that. As far as the dishwasher, is when I'm running super, super late at work and I cannot find a spoon <laughs> to mix up the, uh, the to put the She must be by. running super, super, super late, <laughs> like four out of five days of the week. Because nope. I'll come downstairs like, nope, okay, nope, 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 and nope. I'm like, wait, I don't understand. Look, there's a knife. There might be a, a, a thing that's a jar that's open. Okay, now he's going to tell the truth. Minute. The butter, the butter's laid out. The knife is there. Then there's no, a cup here. I'm not gonna say Something that. don't have a cup, uh, the cap on it. No. Oh my goodness! Lovey is so extra. Cabinets I not, open? No, the cabinets are open. If y'all go back to our Instagram, you that go was back. one picture. I, I will. I did that on see, purpose. She's up to it already. Yeah, because I did it on purpose. I came down and I was in a particularly funny mood that day, and I was getting ready to leave. I said, you know what? I put my stuff down and I opened every cabinet up. I open up the microwave, I open up the oven, I open up the dishwasher, I open all the drawers, everything, and then I left and went to work. <laughs> Exhibit A. She knows that she is an offender. Oh, I even opened up the pantry. You did open up, man. Yep. So anyway. It was fun. Now, back, back to, to the our ladies. story. Right. So no, she was just saying how that's why she's not married and you know, cause who wants to pick up after a man and all this kind of stuff. And then we just, we just started talking about just different things about marriages. Is it different if you pick up after a woman? You said she, she don't like picking up after no man. Well, that's what she said. So those curious. are her words, okay. no man. Right. <laughs> With a feeling too. Amen. So I just started looking at, you know, like I said, different myths about marriage and there were some pretty good ones, and then there are some that, you know, the, the usuals you figure that would be there. Of course, so myth number one, half of marriages end in divorce. So was that like ranking, like this is the number one um, myth, or was it just like, say here's it five, was the number no? One. It says myth number one. It didn't say that the wit, you know. Okay. So anyway. Good ranking. Yeah. I, I'm assuming that it is. I'm going to throw you off. Keep going. So, so what did it say? I'm all befuddled. And <laughs> so what did it say about... Well, it says, you know... Half of I mean, that, that's something that's been out there for ages. And, People and have always has. said that half of all marriages end in divorce. And sometimes I wonder, is that is that a fallacy? Do we need to look that up on Snopes? Snopes? And I don't even want to explain it to you. Just keep oh, going. Oh, I think I know about that. Okay, okay anyway, We can I'm talk sorry. about that after okay, the podcast. Okay, sorry, my bad. So it says, half of, half of couples who tie the knot will be untying it before long. So, according to the CDC... Um, what year? As of 2009, the marriage rate was 6.8 per 1,000 adults in America, and the divorce rate was 3.6 per 1,000. That's old. That's 11 years old. Oh, that is 2009. That is 11 years ago. Wow. So, good thing I looked up the latest stats that I have was 2018. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my bad. Go ahead. Go yeah, on with your bad anyway. stuff. Okay. So, number of marriages in, is. Um, 2,132,853. That's according to the uh, the CDC. CDC. And the marriage the rate... Be looking at I know, right? But they look at a lot of stuff. Oh, anyway, see, you got go me on. off. That's not Ma the CDC. That's the National Marriage and Divorce Rate Trends. Oh, never mind. You're right. I'm bad. Mm. Go on. See, y'all, this is what happens at home. Anyway... The marriage rate is 6.5 per 1,000 total population. Numbers of divorce, number of divorces, 
782,038, sorry. And this is what from 45 states in DC. The divorce rate has actually gone down 2.9 per 1,000. So that's good. That's only and that three. doesn't tell me how many, uh, that's only what? No. I ain't I, trying to do the math. No, that, that's, that's less than a, that's less than a percentage. I mean, like 1%. So that can't be right. Well, I'm saying that's what they said. So. Well, I will tell you that of all the people that we know that are married. I think we know more married couples. I do. Yeah. And it's so funny because I even look at like um, our daughter's friends and our daughter and both our daughter's friends and their parents are all married. True. A lot of the groups. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong. Right? So uh, Almost for people that don't know, I, I coach volleyball and I help run a volleyball organization. So it's for uh, it's a youth group for girls. And it's a lot of parents, you know, a lot of demographics, socioeconomic backgrounds, the whole nine yards. And um, I'd say it's about equally. It's probably more parents that are together than, than, than divorced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, that's a that's a win as far as I'm concerned for marriage, especially for us. You know, we had said that. Well, you know, you know our story. That year four, I asked for a you divorce. Might have some new listeners. Okay, so year four, I asked for a divorce at our anniversary dinner at Morton's while he was eating broccoli. Cream spinach. No, it no broccoli. Cream. It was cream spinach. Anyway, so we were actually knocking at divorce's door, and through counseling and just really hard work, we were able to come back together. And, and since then, you know, we have a saying, divorce is not an option, you know. And I feel but, like... But, but, barring uh, abuse. Barring abuse, yes. Barring, barring abuse. Barring abuse. If you're in an abusive relationship, I say, I'll say man or woman. If you're in an abusive relationship, find some help. Find a way to get safe because that's just not called for. Yeah, emotional, physical, spiritual. Financial. Financial. I mean, there's so many different forms of abuse, but barring abuse, mm -hmm. divorce is not an option. So one thing, too, I thought was interesting. So the numbers, the number has declined since driven by fewer divorces, divorces among college-educated ed men and women who tend to delay marriage. So maybe people who marry earlier in life as opposed to later and have gone to college and maybe they've established themselves somewhat, I don't know. Hmm. But I thought that I was say college-educated, but I, I would tend to believe that a lot of people that whether they're college educated or not, if they delay marriage, if they're getting married later for the very first time, I see that there's probably some logic to to that. I always find that, I mean, because you know, older people, they say, oh, I'm more set in my way. I don't know if that's like 70s, more set in their way, but maybe you, you well, you mature. Hopefully you mature too, and you're able to work out compromises better. And you know what you want. Yeah, you know what you true. specifically want. You know, when you're young, I mean, so many people that get married before the age of, let's say, 26, it can be challenging. And that's about the time we got married, right around 27. No, 20, we were 28, almost 20 27, 28. We so, were and then, 29. but 26, they said that the, the frontal cortex for the male does not completely form until you're 26. So, oh, I thought it was until you're 55. It might be in my case. <laughs> It just might be. So that means I got like three more years where I can say what I want and blame it on I'm not fully nope. developed yet. Mm -mm. I have not hit no, puberty sir, yet. No, sir. No, <laughs> uh, But it's one of those things where I think that the older you are, you would think logically that mm -hmm. person would be, again, more mature and know what they want, a little bit more established. One of the major reasons for divorce, actually, is it even on here where it talks about finances? That money is a major reason? Because, you know. No, it doesn't oh, say what the top reason okay. is. I'm sorry, I'm stealing your thunder. Go ahead. What's, yeah. what's the next thing? Okay. What's the next thing? So, myth number two, marriage kills sex. Amen. It does. Wow. No. Really? <laughs> like, are you serious? It murdered like, it. It was like a serial killer. No. But it's so funny, though, because, I mean, you, you hear this in movies and comedians and, you know, I've heard guys in the roundabout, whatever, talk about, oh, why would you not, why would you want to get married and just hand your, your cojones over to the woman or whatever, you know, it's like people really think that marriage is, marriage kills sex. Well, and I think that... Let's weigh in, lovey. 
Let's weigh in. Yeah. So your man, you're no, married. I don't think it kills sex. I think what happens is that gentlemen, um, gentlemen. both men and women, have a tendency to think that you know it, it's that familiarity sometimes, and that's why you always hear people give the advice of spicing up your life, spicing up your sex life, doing different things, not different people, different things. <laughs> You know, trying to spice it up to the point where it doesn't seem like it's the exact same thing. Look, if you were on a diet of food, I don't care what it is. If somebody's like, oh, I'm on paleo. Oh, I'm doing Whole30. Or I'm doing, you know, whatever it is. After a certain amount of time, the effect of that particular diet on your body and your metabolism wears off. And I believe that from a biological standpoint, that people have a tendency to get into a rut. In anything that you do. You can come home and talk to your spouse and be like, hey, how you doing? If you have the same conversation every single day, it will get boring. But the onus of responsibility rests back on the couple to be able to say, hey, you know what? People tell me that marriage kills sex. No, marriage doesn't kill sex. Lack of variation, lack of spontaneity, lack of imagination will kill your sex. And if you're sitting here doing vanilla, it's just now, unless you guys are just like, I love missionary, and that's my favorite, and that's what I'm going to always do. And I don't want nothing else but vanilla. I love me some vanilla. Nope, not chocolate chip. Nope, not cookie dough. I just like vanilla. You know, so if if that's what's going to cause a problem. And there was a, um, I, I mentioned this before, where people have asked about whether monogamy is is truly something that humans can do because they look at animals and they say oh well these animals are not monogamous you know and they're not meant to they're supposed to actually go out and be with different no that's not the case that's the wild anyway. there, there's only one animal that i know of that mates for life isn't that the whale nope well maybe i don't know that's the only one that i know of turtles. It's a seahorse oh i thought it was turtles i don't know and a whale maybe no i think whatever. i think turtles be out there just getting Doing a freak it. on <laughs> no but i know seahorse is actually made for life but here's the challenge. Really? Um, one person I heard, I think it was Sean Stevens or somebody he was interviewing, or actually, no, it was, um, I, I can't think of his name. Uh, it's it's going to come back to me later. But there was an interview that was taking place, and the guest was saying that, realistically, you can be with the same person, but real, you're not the same person. Nobody should be the same person that you married. We were, we've been married 23 years. Mm -hmm. I am not the same person that she married. I am different than who I was in year one, in year five, in year 10, in year 15, in year 20. We're all different. And if you are, so effectively, I say all that because effectively, you're not sleeping with the same person. You're sleeping with the new iteration or that individual. You're doing different things. Okay, so let me ask you a question. What about scheduling sex? Do you think that that's a, that's a marriage killer? Um, it depends on the individuals. You know, if you schedule sex, I personally think it's like, oh, because you hear about it. There's, there's other organizations out there. There's, um, uh, I can't think of the name. My mind is really not working for me tonight. There's another podcast, another group out there uh, that talks about scheduling sex. And there's a lot of groups out there that do that. There's a lot of marriage counselors that talk about it because you're so busy. You can still have a wonderful sex life if both of you are open to it as far as the scheduling. Okay, at... Um, 8 p.m. on Friday. That's our get down time. Nobody better call. <laughs> you know, uh, whatever. If that works for you, great. If it's spontaneity, at least schedule a spontaneity. Meaning that, okay, uh, this upcoming Friday, I don't know what time, I don't know how, don't know where, but, you know, that's going to be our time to release. So you, you clear the calendar in that respect. There's a variety of ways to do this. Um, but here's the, here's the trick to it all. Be committed to being passionate with your spouse. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, okay, so for me, the whole scheduled sex thing, there have been times where I've scheduled sex. You just didn't know that I was scheduling it. Oh, for real? Yeah, because when we... I need access to your calendar. No. <laughs> like when I was in school, and, you know, and when we were doing volleyball, and it was just like every free... I, I had no free moments, and so I was like, okay, I would be... Like, you'd be like, babe, you need to go to bed. And I'm like, no, I know. I just got to finish this. I was trying to get ahead so that I was like, okay. Because this night, oh. it's just going to be us. So I'm going to be, you know, I don't have to worry about putting aside whatever because I wanted it to be just you and I. I don't have to worry, you know, what's going on. My mind is not on 
whatever it's right. on this and it's on and like you say so many there are so many things who are always moving a lot of people are so busy that scheduling sex it doesn't sound like it could be fun but it is fun when because i'm like okay in my mind okay i got this oh yeah we going blah 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 whatever i have a whole scenario planned and so you know if you if like you were saying if you if you spice it up and you're passionate about and it's not just the same, well, okay, let me hear, okay, take your pants off, okay, turn over, or whatever it is. You know, you had no idea that I was scheduling, you know. I had no idea. No. So I'm going to give you full access to my calendar so you can do some more scheduling no, on my calendar no, as well. No, no, because you don't like scheduling. But, here, but here, here's the crux of it. The crux of it always comes back to communication. Mm -hmm. Because you were telling me that, okay, we want to move forward and we want to, I got this stuff that I need to do. You were talking to me about it. And... And, and don't get us wrong, folks. It's not like there hasn't been dry spells because when we were playing, you know, coaching volleyball, doing volleyball, it's, there's so much that's been happening where we, there have been times we just could not because our schedules just would not align. It's so funny because, you know, usually you go to, a lot of time you go to a hotel room, you're like, ooh, it's going to be romantic. Nope. Those were the most sexless ro uh, <laughs> hotel stays. I'm like, uh, the girls are right next to in the bed next to us, you know, it's like, oh, it was like okay. Oh, okay, they're off with their friends. It was like, <laughs> I know. It's but like, I, Lovey, come on. Well, I don't care about parent meeting. Let's go. It's <laughs> funny. That's funny. Okay, so marriage kills sex. Hopefully we've... Well, okay, look. We mentioned communication. I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this. Go to our website, marriedintocrazy.com. We are having another online Married Into Crazy communication workshop. It's free. It's free for you and yourselves, but you do have to register. And then you will gain access to our extreme execution assessment that has the flight assessment assessment on there. Uh, flight assessment assessment. Flight assessment assessment. But it has the, the assessment on there. You'll be able to take that and be able to use that. And what we'll do is utilize some methods on DISC to increase better communication. So when there are challenges with scheduling your sex, it will our <laughs> class, our workshop, will help you at least recognize the tendencies and the traits of the other your, your spouse or your partner so that way you can know that okay this is how i need to schedule this is how i need to approach it because i know how they like to communicate speaking of and here's a perfect example just a few set moments i should say moments a few moments ago you talked about how okay so it was fun for me because i got to schedule it and i had this idea and i had everything laid out da, 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 da. so snooks is what we call <laughs> an air traffic controller yes according to our workshop and between her necessity of having things laid out in a process, things in order, being she had everything, she had an entire process that was like everything that she wanted to do was very methodical and how she approached mm -hmm. scheduling. Now, sex wasn't methodical, at least I don't remember being that, but <laughs> but her process of getting there was. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that we teach in our communication workshop, at least touch upon, at least make you aware of it. So please go to marriedintocrazy.com. Go to our coaching page, that tab, scroll down, and you will see the workshop taking place on June 27th. So definitely take a listen. Listen. Yeah. And or look. Or look. Right. Right. Handle that. Okay. So myth okay, number three. So, no, I want to say what about the marriage, how it kills sex. Just want to give oh, some good. numbers. Okay. So basically married couples are more likely than single couples to, okay, no, 41% of married couples had sex at least once a week compared to unmarried people who don't have it that often, as often as it seems they do, that they do. Married couples were, this is married couples were more likely to, more likely than singles to reach orgasm at least 91% of the time they had sex, with 47% hitting that target compared with 38% of singles. Well, hold on, hold on, because that's important. So you said married I was people. I about to say high five. Uh, okay, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Look, if you go out and I don't care how many times you have sex, if you're not having that drum roll at the end, mm, it's probably not as fun. So married folks, hey, I'm proud of all y'all, 91%. Look at hey. you. If you were a free throw shooter, you would be the bomb. You would be the one that nobody would want to foul at the end because... That's right. You're handling your business with that 91%. Big Mac. That's what I'm talking about. Good job there, husbands. Good job. Really? <laughs> I'm just saying. Wow, okay. okay. Whatever. Okay, what's next? Next. 
Myth number three, husbands are more likely to stray. False, false. Where do I hit the button? How that even? <clears throat> how do you know that? Because. Because what? I don't know. Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so look here. I will say this: that in my personal experience, mm -hmm. back in my heathen days, uh, before we met, mm -hmm. when I was in the service, uh, to me it appeared that there was no the wives strayed. The and again, I was overseas on a base, and we were in another country. You know, so women strayed, men strayed. It seemed like there was no. It was like equal opportunity. Um, people putting payment plans in for hell. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's well, give me so some the, stats. The studies, Tell me what well, they the say. studies suggest that men and women cheat at a similar rate. Okay. So women have caught up to the game, I guess, of cheating because previously it was 20 to 25% of men cheat versus 10 to 15% of women cheat. Hmm. We say so it's about equal now. So they said they, they basically cheat at a similar rate. So I like to retract what I said earlier about how um, I was being a heathen. Actually, I was conducting research. No, no, because that was in the eighties. That in the was early nineties. That was in the uh, let's call it, yeah, it was in the eighties. I was about to say because we met we met mid nineties, yeah. so get it together, brother. I'm just saying, yep, that's good research right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, myth number four: divorce is always the worst choice for the kids. Mm, that one hurts. So for us. I mean, you know, like we, we talked about ourselves, how divorce is not an option for us, but we both come from um, divorced households. And I know that I, knowing what I know, I'm glad that my mom and my dad, <clears throat> excuse me, my mom and my bi biological father did not get uh, stay married because my mom and my biological father, they used to argue and I remember this, so I, I see families that are torn apart from the mom and the father fighting a lot or arguing a lot. And the kids are, they're in that environment and they're just like, it, it takes a toll on them, you know, the ones that I know. So not passing judgment or anything on anyone else. But like I said, I'm just glad that my mom and my dad saw fit to say, you know what, this is not working and we just need to cut our ties and move on. You know, so my parents have been divorced ever since I was two. Um, my earliest memory happened around that time when um, there was a confrontation that took place and um, and they always say, oh, you should remember that you were just a baby. But I mean, I can tell the story like, like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, it was pretty traumatic. But in that, I do believe that it's never good. So here's the thing. When you're in a relationship and you're married and you have children, your job isn't just to raise those children and help them become great citizens and, and upstanding individuals for the community. A large part of your responsibility is to model what it is to have a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think people lose sight of that or never think about it because I... I up until a certain point, I had never seen a healthy relationship mm -hmm. until my aunt married my uncle. Or, well, so my aunt married you know, a gentleman, and when they got married, um, that was my first time seeing like true love. And, and did they have difficulties? Absolutely. But did they work it out? Absolutely. And it was just when they looked at each other, there was a level of respect that I hadn't seen in other relationships. I witnessed some craziness. You know, people... You know, checking genitals when they come home. Um, I, I witnessed, you know, accusations left and right. Um, you know, my, my mother had been married three times, my father four times. And so when you say that divorce is always the worst choice for kids, think about when you stay married and you're arguing. And it's an unhealthy relationship and mm -hmm. it's nothing but toxicity that's in the home. The kids are witnessing that, and you're teaching them that that's the norm. That's This is what marriage is supposed to be. This is what a relationship is supposed to be. You know, us yelling and screaming and hitting and throwing and all these different things. Yeah, that's the norm. And then we turn around, we have the audacity to get upset when our daughter or our son turns around and exhibits the exact same behavior, either accepting of that behavior from someone else or exhibiting that behavior and becoming the aggressor against someone else. And then we 
we wonder well, where that come from. Well, it's exactly what you taught them to do. And so it's better, I think, for an individual to give the, the kids an opportunity to be in a, as much of a stress-free environment. There's different stressors. Okay, so if you're not two people in the household, if you're not married, then yes, okay, might be a single parent working. That's going to create some stress economically, uh, time-wise, a variety of different things. But I still have to think that 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 is minimal compared to watching them fight and, and the anger and the frustration and all those those negative things. It's going to create a form of PTSD. You know, there are a lot of kids right now and they're recognizing that post uh, uh, PTSD, uh, how's it? PTSD, PTSD post trauma, stress, traumatic tra stress disorder. There you go. Like, my mind is not working this like, evening. Are you okay? I have no <laughs> idea what's going on. Uh, All right. But anyway, so that's why I think it's it's not the best choice to stay together for the kids mm -hmm. because you're ultimately doing a disservice to those children and to yourself. Look, this is not a dress rehearsal. It's not like we're going to live this out a little bit and then we're going to get to our real lives. This is all we get. Yeah. So you have to live your best life and your best life and teach your children how to live their best life as well. I, I agree with that. And like you said, um, I know several people who are in relationships that are abusive and we've had conversation and they were like, well, I want to stay for the daughter or the son and, you know, as gently as I can. I'm like, well, what do you think you're showing them? You're showing them that it's okay for her father to do this to you or it's okay for your mother to do that, her, his mother to do, you know, whatever. And, you know, studies also show that kids that are in marriage, uh, not marriages, but kids that come from marriage families where the father and the mother fought a lot and they stayed together, they experience a lot of conflict in their adult life and in their adult relationships. It more so than kids who don't come from that type of environment where the parents, they decide that they just want to split up. One thing, um, it's, it's almost like, too, I, I think about like an alcoholic when there's an alcohol your your father is an alcoholic nine i won't say nine out of ten i don't know what the actual statistical numbers are but sometimes the kids grow up and there is a high number that the kids grow up to become alcoholics also in the same tone you set that example for the kids they will either be uh, they are either more they're more likely to be either abused or the abuser. So it's, it's like we talked about before, you, they, people are watching, the little people, mm -hmm. the people that matter are watching. I remember arguments and stuff that my mom and my dad had, and I said, oh, I would never do that. And I was very young, and I don't remember exactly what they were about, I just remember the actions. I couldn't tell you what they were fighting about, but I remember the slamming of the doors, the yelling or, or whatever. And I was like, early on, I was like, oh, no, 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 I will never do that. You know, I won't take that. Mm. So, you know, earlier this past week, I ended up talking with someone that um, it wasn't a, a, a coaching session, but we had a very deep conversation um, with a gentleman that I had met and had a discussion about being in a narcissistic relationship. And um, he had been in a relationship with a narcissist. And upon further reflection, come to find out that his mother, the way he described his father, was a narcissist. Mm -hmm. And so he grew up in a narcissistic home mm -hmm. where the mother did certain things to appease the narcissist. Mm -hmm. And so he, in turn, was in an, his first relationship was that. And to your point, what happens is we exhibit behaviors and we mimic them. If you watch, if you see how a baby interacts with the people around them, they always mimic. You know, they have a tendency, you stick out your tongue, they'll try and stick out their tongue. You you know, you move a certain hand or whatever, then they'll try and mimic. And that mirroring takes place in more than just the physical attributes. It also happens with our, our mental and our habitual processes. And we have to be very careful of that because children will hear 0% of what you say hundred percent of what you do see hundred percent of what you do absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely and what do you think they're gonna mimic what takes root <laughs> it's always the bad stuff <laughs> it seems like right seems like that <laughs> seems like that so I just I know we spent a lot of time on this one but I think it's really important for people to really think about if you're in a relationship by no means are we saying oh we need to get a divorce mm -mm. 
But what we are saying is seek help. You know, recognize whose eyes are on you. Mm -hmm. And really talk to somebody. And I'm not saying do it for the children to get counseling, to get coaching, trying to get to that next level. But I will say be aware of the consequences of, consequences of all your actions. Mm -hmm. and, but don't just stay there for the kids, the sake of the child, because you may be doing more damage staying together than you are. And, and hey, we're, we're marriage coaches, and we talk to people all the time about you know, staying together and giving methodologies and different things that they can do mm -hmm. um, to approach the communication. So we're all about love. We love love. But what I can't ever advocate is damaging a child's opportunity to, to live a fruitful and happy happy and loving life down the road as well so anyway okay so the last one is couples therapy is for fixing a broken marriage that's a myth that's what they say couples therapy no. couples therapy is for fixing a broken marriage okay so if you're in an elevator <laughs> and that elevator goes up and down there's 25 floors and those buttons are pushed all the time just like in a marriage buttons are always getting pushed and at some point, you know, you think, you know, you, you got two buildings, both 25 floors, buttons getting pushed all the time. One building, every year or so, every six months, maybe annually, maybe every two years, there's a maintenance person that comes in and works on the elevator. Mm -hmm. And that thing never has a problem. The building next door, 25 floors, 25 buttons. Buttons being pushed all the time lots of traffic, all of that, but they never have anybody. Which building do you, they never have anybody come in and do maintenance. One of those elevators are potentially gonna break down. Let's say they're being used the exact same amount, same amount of buttons being pushed, same amount of time passes by, but one is getting periodic maintenance to make sure it continues to work, one gets zero maintenance. Which one do you think is going to break down first? The zero maintenance. Same thing with our, our relationships. Buttons are being pushed all the mm -hmm. time. And there's a lot of traffic that goes on. The years go by. And I believe that couples therapy, whether it be with coaches like Snooks and I, I could put a shameless plug in there right now, but I'm not going to. But you could go to marriedandcrazy.com, check out our coaching. And Hey, that sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> You need that constant maintenance, not because something is wrong, but because you know that you want this thing to work for a very long time. Well, that's just like a car. You know, they give you instructions when you buy a car. I think we kind of talked about um, some of the maintenance that, that take care uh, that happen in a car, the preventative maintenance and hmm, yeah. certain things. And you do, you do things to make sure that whatever it is that you use and you you utilize often that it stays running correctly <laughs> the refrigerator the washer and the dryer like i said the car you know you can't just put gas in the car and then just keep going you have to get an oil change you have to ha have a tune up there's there are other things that happen with the car you have to put fluid in and, and certain things like that for whatever reason, I don't know what it is about going to therapy. I guess maybe because the word therapy, it's it makes it sound like there's something wrong with you. So when you say, oh, I got to go to couples therapy, you know, you don't typically go to therapy unless there's something wrong. Like, what True. is that? Physical therapy. Right. So I, I need to rebuild whatever. I mean, you can look at it in the same way, but it's always a negative when you talk about fixing your relationship or working on your relationship or maintaining it everyone looks at it negatively oh i'm good we good we don't need that we we solid we blah 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 and did it did but i'm sorry love you hates when i do that but what people don't realize is that when you go to therapy or counseling or what coaching, whatever it is whatever, coaching right. you know you you're able to get different types of tools you get emotional mm -hmm. tools that you can utilize in your marriages and learn how to conflict resolution and you know besides slamming the door or saying he's dumb or whatever you know there's all that you know if you go back episode 83 of our podcast scroll back and take a listen to because we, we talked about this in I depth like i thought we talked about we did and i don't want to mess up the title because i have a tendency to do that but it was don't wait for the dummy lights <laughs> that was a fun fun episode but it was talking about 
Maintenance. Because mm-hmm. we're talking about maintenance, you know. Don't wait for the dummy light to come on. You don't want to wait for your oil light to come on mm-hmm. to get that oil. You want to make sure that you handle it before then. Same thing with your gas. You see when the needle is moving. It's that constant maintenance. You know that if you want your marriage to be a finely tuned machine, the Mercedes, the Bentley, the one, you need constant maintenance. Because if you wait for something to go out, it's going to be expensive. And, and one thing, too, you, you, you we need to think about when dealing in counseling or whatever, um, go, you, you have a good relationship, but you can have a great relationship. And if you say, oh, I have a great relationship, but you can have an amazing relationship. And if it's amazing, you can go to phenomenal. You know, don't just stay at good. Good is good, but why settle for good when you can have phenomenal? And these type of tools that you can get from MaryIntoCrazy.com. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But these are the type of tools that you learn, you know, how to interact, how to do certain things, and you appreciate each other, you know. So. I do. I think it's I think it's a great, great, great point. This was fun talking about all these different things, you know, and there's a and it was so funny though, is I was looking through your notes as you were talking, and there's so many other topics that it's funny, all these different sources have different myths mm-hmm. and, and they don't overlap. There's different ones and it's funny, depending upon what you look up, yeah, you might find five other myths that were because I mean I'm looking at these pages and they're all different. Yeah, and I like the one with Napoleon Hill where he talked about like marriage uh more more people that are married are successful. More successful people are married than not. So like he Napoleon this was over a hundred years ago, obviously, but Every re- he's researched the most the hundred most successful people, and they were all men and they were all married. I, I was like, like, oh, that was because of the woman. More than likely, I, I like Napoleon Hill. <laughs> you go back, you take a look at the Napoleon Hill Foundation. There's some great work there, like Think and Grow Rich. You know, some great books. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but if you're gonna read Think and Grow Rich, read Think and Grow Rich: A Black Choice by Dennis, Dennis Kimbrough. Kimbrough. Um, who was um, actually brought in by the Napoleon Hill Foundation to finish the manuscript that was being developed by Napoleon Hill for the African-American community. So this was fun. Um, we're not going to do a I Can Can for Couples today, are we? Are we? Before we do, if we're going to do I Can Can for Couples, it's right there. I know. Did you not want to? No, so what we'll do is before we do that, oh, I, I do want to say this. Either. Before you shake it up, because we're coming to the end. Don't, don't shake, I said before we shake it up. <laughs> Sorry. Um, one thing I want to do is at the end of every podcast from now until um, the end of the year, our goal is that from now until the end of the year, we are going to recognize uh, silence at the very end of our podcast for eight minutes and 46 seconds. And those eight minutes and 46 seconds, we're not politicizing this, but what we are saying is that there are a lot of voices that are being silenced, like George Floyd. And there's Ahmed Berry, there's uh, Breonna, Taylor. Breonna Taylor, there's Trayvon Martin, there's Tamir Rice, there's Eric Garner. The names go on. There's Philanda Castile. There's so many names that we can mention right now. But beyond their names, there's so many names that we've never heard of. Mm-hmm. That have gone through the exact same plight, that have had the exact same voice or a similar voice that has been silenced forever. And so what I'd like to do and what we plan to do is that when we say, when we sign off after we do the I Can Can for Couples and we say bye-bye, there will be eight minutes and 46 seconds of silence. And then our outro music will come in. And we'll do this at the end, like I said, of every single one of our podcasts from here on out. So that may fit like a, a, a serious tone in it, but I'll bring it up earlier in the podcast next time. So right now we're going to go for our two for the road. Okay. I'm on the road next week. We can call it that again. Oh, okay. So what we're doing is pulling from the I Can Can for Couples, which is available on the website. And what we're doing is these are affirmations that start off with I Can. And these are little things that make all the difference in the world in your relationship. But they're super simple. And there's 40 different ones in each can. And it's a bit of a, a tool to help you kind of plan things out. And you can use it how you like. So what does yours say? I can do the grocery shopping. <laughs> so mine actually says something that I've been promising you I would do for the last two weeks. Around my feet. Yep. It says, I can massage my partner's feet. 
But something he, always comes up. Yes, he always says that too. What was it? Monday, Sunday night we were watching a movie and he goes, oh, I could be massaging your feet right now. I was like, lovey, I'm ready to go to bed. Yeah, so my bad, but I will mm-hmm. handle it. I will handle it. You might even get two this week. I'll let y'all know if he does. Well, I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to check your calendar to see what's scheduled. Mm-hmm. That might affect <laughs> the schedule. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Uh, we love each and every one of you. We're so pleased that you have chosen to spend some time with us and listen. Um, we are married into crazy, as are you. Now, we might debate on which one of us I married into crazy. Say, who's the crazy? Uh, but it doesn't matter because we're in it together. So until the next time, be blessed. Bye-bye. Go ahead and stop that.